Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video about Obsidian content. I'm Dan, in case you're new here. I have this YouTube channel, and then I also have a website, dannb.org. I write about a bunch of stuff, including Obsidian content, and I've shared several uh, Obsidian systems that I have and kind of tutorials for how to set those up. And it's got me thinking a bit about my overarching note-taking philosophy and how that sort of applies to what I've built and what I've been doing in Obsidian. And so I sort of wanted to distill that note-taking philosophy into 10 tips for Obsidian note-taking for beginners, for advanced beginners, to hopefully help you take better notes in your own systems. So with all that said, let's just jump into it. There's a difference between working on your note-taking system and using your note-taking system to do real work. Always know what you're doing. With a tool as advanced and capable as Obsidian, it's very easy to spend all of your time trying to set up perfect templates or install these plugins and do these advanced kind of functionality. And that's all well and good, but just know that that's not actually doing real work. You're working on your note-taking system rather than using your note-taking system. So it's fine to do that kind of thing, but just be aware that you're doing it and make sure that you're not only doing that and you are spending actual time doing the work that you actually want to be doing. Obsidian is super powerful when you start thinking in systems. For me, an Obsidian system contains three things. The first is an MOC or a map of content page. That's kind of an index of everything related to this system area. And then you have a template file. So it's very easy to create new notes of a certain type in this enclosed system. And then on your MOC, you'll have a data view table, which is just a way to link all of those pages together to that centralized form. And so once you start thinking in these systems, you'll have a system for different things. Like you have a daily note system, you have a meeting note system, you have a people note system. All of these different things are tiny enclosed systems inside your larger Obsidian life. And when you start thinking like that and thinking, okay, what in my notes can be created into a system, then you have really powerful note taking. Build systems based on how you're working. Don't create a system first and then try to change your behavior to fit the system. The best way to build a new system is to just start creating new notes and just write and see how you're using Obsidian and then create a system based on that. So take a few notes, build a template based on those notes, put an MOC and then make everything linked to the MOC and just do it based on how you're actually working. If you try to guess how you're going to be working and set things up in advance, you're just not gonna use your system or there's so many things that you're not gonna use, it's just gonna be a waste of time. So build your systems based on how you are actually working. Taking notes is easy. Actually using those notes is hard. The biggest challenge with a second brain or a complex note-taking system is actually looking at notes again after you've created them. This is really hard. You're gonna to have to make a conscious effort to actually do it. And that means having a weekly review, using the random note button, whatever it is, it's gonna be a different system that works for everybody, but make sure you're not just taking notes. You also have a process for reviewing and using the notes that you take. Productivity ebbs and flows. Build systems that support this. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Seinfeld strategy, but it's where he writes jokes every single day and he wants to create this chain that is never broken. And that's great if you can work like that. For me, that is not how I work. For me, productivity really ebbs and flows and I'll go through periods of being productive and then periods of not being productive. And the secret is to build systems and to create note-taking a world that you can fall out of when you want to, and then jump back in when you're re feeling ready to jump back in. So building systems that is easy to get back into after a break, you kind of write notes to your future self to help you on board and just make things super easy to get back into. It's gonna be much better if you actually have one of those periods where you're not as productive and the cost of getting back into things is gonna be much less, which is gonna be better for your future self. Your notes are a living knowledge base, not an archive. Sometimes when I'm reading old notes, I get this urge to just not touch it. It's like 
some sort of archive of a past period in time, and I don't wanna actually edit the note at all. I know that I need to get over this. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but your notes are a living knowledge base. You want to constantly be improving them, using the knowledge, changing the format, rewriting things. So make sure you don't treat your past notes as an archive, but treat them as a living knowledge base that you can use and modify and edit and improve. New ideas come from the intersection of existing ideas. If you're taking notes and you take them on two separate articles, each of those notes are gonna contain the ideas of the people that wrote those original articles. If you then try to figure out how those ideas intersect, that's gonna be new knowledge. That's new work that you came up with. So if you're trying to come up with new knowledge, try to think about where two existing ideas that you have from other people intersect. Writing is thinking. Most people believe that writing is something you do after you come up with new ideas. It's very much not the case. Writing things down is how you process your thoughts. It is a form of thinking. So default to writing as early as possible. And you're going to learn where you have gaps in knowledge. You're going to learn where you need to research and learn more. And that is going to be the best way to think up new ideas and to do your actual work. Publish, even if no one is watching. You should be publishing your writing. You should create a website. You should put together articles based on what you're learning, and you should publish them, even if nobody is reading your blog. Publishing forces you to create a finished product. It forces you to think things through, and eventually you're going to get some visibility. It just inevitably happens if you keep creating content, and it's just super valuable for you as an individual, for thinking out loud, for your personal presence, all of these sorts of things. And if you're working in a note-taking system, you're already 90% of the way there. So just do the extra 10% and publish your writing. Mimicry is a shortcut to success. Whenever you're starting a new project or learning a new skill, the secret is to look at the masters in the space, the people that are already doing what you want to be doing, and then see what you can learn from them in terms of how they are working, in terms of how they present themselves, and then try to mimic that as much as possible. Don't copy exactly what they're doing, obviously, but look at what they are already doing, like the methods that they're using. The reason being is the masters in the space have spent a lot of time and energy figuring out why they do things the way that they do. And if you just copy the end result, kind of what they're doing, you are gaining the benefit of all that knowledge without actually having to get that knowledge yourself. And that knowledge will come, that comes with experience, that comes from doing it. But the way to shortcut your work is to look at the masters in the space, see how they're doing things, and try your best to hold yourself to that level of quality and that level of professionalism. And when you do that, it's just a shortcut to success. And that's my 10 Obsidian tips. If you've liked this, please like this video, subscribe, look at my newsletter, look at my website. I'm brand new to YouTube, so if you're enjoying these, please let me know because it encourages me to keep going. And with that said, have a great day.